Welcome to the Bob Stoops app. I'm Brad McMullen along with Hall of Fame football coach Bob Stoops. All right, the new coaches poll is out. And Alabama, number one, Ohio State, number two, Georgia, number three. And you've got Clemson at number four. Another team receiving a first place vote all the way down at 18 are the Texas Longhorns. Oklahoma coming in at number nine. Coach, your first thoughts on the brand new coaches poll. Uh, you know, the, you, it's, you can't really argue with the first four. Um, that's been pretty steady, you know, over the last many years. Uh, OU's been up there, you know, and we still are being at number nine and having the changes uh, that we've had. You have to see how that works, as well as all the defensive players that we lost a year ago for the most part and, and some offense. So overall, I mean, it, it's, I think it's positive for OU to be already up in the top, you know, in the top ten. Um, surprised it. <laughs> I don't know where or who who was doing what when they voted Texas number one, but um, I you know the fact they could be in the top ten or fifteen, whatever it may be, but number one's a little a little bit different. Yeah, Red Ribbon Week taught us not to use drugs, and I think it's really <laughs> important when you look at this. Last year, Texas had a losing record. They lost to Kansas, and for somebody on day one to think that they're better than Alabama, better than Ohio State, better than defending national champion Georgia, Clemson, Notre Dame, Michigan, Texas a and Utah, Oklahoma, who beat them last year. Did you, again, I think they're going to be competitive. I think they're going to be much improved. But the best team in the country on day one of the season? They might ought to take that person's voting rights away, <laughs> whatever coach did that. But we'll see. Um, you know, it'll be interesting. But uh, – that's okay, you know, the, I always had the mindset this time of year, none of that matters, you know, you gotta go earn it. Yep, and, and you, giving retrospect, last year in the AP poll preseason number one, you had Alabama, number one, Oklahoma, number two, Clemson, number three, Ohio State, four, Georgia, who would win the national championship, at number five, and one of the things that I remember last year when we were doing the preseason show, you picked Georgia to be in the national championship game against Oklahoma. You were right about the Bulldogs. How do you think the Bulldogs will be this year? I think uh, they're going to be good, though, you know, just with the way they've been recruiting, and Kirby Smart does a great job as a head coach. But they lost some They lost some key guys, um, you know, especially defensively. I, I don't know, they, about the whole – defensive team yeah. was drafted in the top couple rounds so I think they're still having people <laughs> drafted so anyway I, I think they'll but they'll they'll reload and still be good but I don't I don't think they'll be quite as good um you know generally there's a little when you lose that many guys there's a little bit of a drop off but but they're doing a great job there so I'm sure they'll still be in the hunt and look at some teams that were not ranked Florida was not ranked North Carolina UCLA who had a good year Iowa's not ranked, Penn State, Tennessee, LSU, Mississippi State, all out of the top 25. Yeah, I don't like that for my Hawkeyes. Yeah. You know, I'm an, <laughs> the old Hawkeye at heart here that we, well, they'll, they'll fight their way into there. So uh, that's okay. Again, these preseason polls are, you know, they're just for fun coffee talk. Yeah, you know. starting point. And, and yeah. when you won the national title in 2000, uh, you weren't in the top five, the top 10 preseason. I want, top I want to say, I think we were 19 yeah. to start the year. So, uh, which, you know, that was, again, you got to go earn it. You, you start earning it, you move up. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. All right, let's talk about recruiting. So about a month ago, Oklahoma was 41st in the nation in recruiting, according to ESPN. Now they're number six in the nation, according to ESPN, with 11 ESPN top 300 athletes. The recruiting trail has been very crucial in the month of July here in early August for Oklahoma. All the momentum in the world behind the Boomer Sooner. They're doing a great job. Uh, Brent's a great recruiter, got great passion to, to learn and meet new people and, and spread his vision, what he wants. So he does a great job as, as well as all his staff, you know. So, um, you know, and I think Everyone early on was a little nervous. We weren't getting the early commitments. And it, Brent was very purposeful that he, he, when he got a commitment's a commitment in his eyes. If you're going to go visit three other schools, you're not committed to us. They don't want you to just lightly commit. When, when you're committed and you know you don't want to be involved with other schools, you tell us that and then you're committed. And, and that took a while. And he, and he was... You know, that he knew a lot of guys wanted to maybe early, but he wanted them to be sure. 
And then when, once they do, hopefully, and they could still, you know, you're going to probably still have a decommitment here or there, but for the most part, you know you got guys that want to be here. That's right, and these kids have dreams, right? Not only playing major college football, but maybe one day winning the Heisman Trophy, and you've coached a number of Heisman Trophy winners. Looking at the field of potential Heisman Trophy winners heading into 2022, this is Vegas. Bryce Young is up there, obviously from Alabama. C.J. Stroud, uh, uh, Caleb Williams from USC, Bijan Robinson from Texas, Will Rogers from Mississippi State. Got to love that name, Will Rogers. Uh, Dylan Gabriel from Oklahoma, and Spencer Rattler from South Carolina. That's some of the big names right there on the board. Yeah, I, you know, the top two, Bryce Young and C.J. Stroud, to me, have, uh, you know, just have an advantage in that back with their same schools, same coordinators, um, great teams, you know. So they're, they're going to get a lot of notoriety. They're going to be on TV a lot. And they're going to have success. They, they, you know, they've had too much success already not to have it again. Um, some of the others haven't had as much success. I'm always careful about anticipating success. Mm. You know, we've had that happen at OU. So uh, Spencer Rattler, when he was with us, was projected to be one of the top two, three, and ends up losing his job. Uh, you know, so, you know, you have to be careful. I, I like the guys that have already done it you know, make a big difference. And, and I, like, I like Dylan Gabriel at OU because of his experience. Same thing, he's been on the field. He's thrown for eight, over 8,000 yards. He's got a great touchdown to interception ratio, and he's working with the guy that helped him do it, with Jeff Levy, who's, had, who's, who's really a strong offensive coordinator that I think is gonna surprise people. So hopefully that's the case. I'm always optimistic for OU, but, um, but anyway, I, those top couple, I, I think, got the best best chance. Yeah, Stanford Steve from ESPN has picked Dylan Gabriel to win the Heisman. He's kind of his dark horse candidate. He thinks he's going to win. He thinks Oklahoma is going to do very, very well. For the reasons his experience, and he's worked with Jeff Levy, understanding this offense, and Jeff Levy is a great O coordinator, and people are going to see it. Yeah, and he just said that the OU football program is different now. They're, they're just a little hungry and a lot more physical, and so it's going to be a lot of fun to watch. My question is Spencer Rattler. We know he's got a cannon of an arm. You've, you've had an opportunity to see him up front. South Carolina, they're going to play a lot of tough people in the SEC. He, his ceiling is high, though. If he can win some of these upsets and do well in that conference, he's going to be front and center. I wish him the best. He's an awesome young man to be around. I loved being around him when he was here. Um, you know, just I'd sat in meetings once in a while uh, also. And again, awesome young man. So I, I wish him nothing but the best. And same for Caleb Williams. Um, he stuck around. I got to work with him the one month, you know, uh, before the Alamo Bowl. And he couldn't have been a better guy to work with. And uh, so I, I enjoyed the, all that time. And I've texted him even that I wish him the very best of luck and want him to do well. You, you, want, you want these young guys to that have come here and you, you, you know a little bit to really go out and do well. Yep. And all right, so let's talk a little bit about potential conference champions. Let's start with the Big 12. What do you think about the Big 12 championship game at the end of the year? Who's going to be in it and why? Well, the obvious choice, uh, you know, I, uh, of course I'm going to say Oklahoma, and, and I really do believe in what Brent's doing with the coordinators, the way they're coaching. I've been out of practice, and they are flying around uh, with a ton of energy. And so, you know, I, I feel really good. But, but I, you know, Baylor has a lot of players back. And if, and if that quarterback that's going to start beat out Bohannon, who I thought was excellent last year, I really, you know, I, being with Big Noon Kickoff with Fox, really studied Baylor a lot last year, and I thought they were an excellent football team all around running the football. I thought Bohannon, the quarterback, they did a really great job with him, moving him around, making plays with him defensively, of course, with Dave Aranda. They're going to be good and solid, and they are. So they're going to be good. Um, Oklahoma State will be good. Mike Gundy's done an awesome job uh, every year with uh, Oklahoma State. I worry there, there's a little bit of difference with defense. They, I'm not sure how many guys they lost defensively last they lost year. They lot. lost some really key ones. Yes. Some some were sixth year players, I think. Yes. Fifth and sixth. And their defensive and, coordinator. And Jim Knowles, I thought, was outstanding. Not that I'm sure there's been some these guys have studied under and with Jim so that he hopefully they can, for their sake, can keep the same system because it was excellent. And I thought Jim Knowles did an awesome job. And 
Actually, uh, I was spoke at Ohio State's football clinic in the spring and got to see Jim and, and, and run into him. And, and, uh, and I, I think he does an outstanding job. So he'll, he'll do well at Ohio State as well. Yeah, Oklahoma State finished in the top five in the nation in total defense last right. year under him. That's a big win. Uh, the thing for me about Baylor is that they were sound defensively. They didn't miss open field tackles. They, they got to the point of the attack and they got the guy on the ground fast. And I know that's concept, that's basic football, but not everybody does it, and they did it very well. They did, and, and they're gonna, they lost a couple key guys, one of their linebackers, and their, their nickel back uh, was, was outstanding. All right, so you got Baylor and Oklahoma in the Big 12 championship game. Do I have to feel where you're leaning on that game? <laughs> oh, no, no. <laughs> No leaning whatsoever. So uh, I, I just um, I'm excited. You know I'm, I'm anticipating really a strong team, and I, I really believe in the coaching staff, not just Coach Venables, but I I like uh, you know what they're all doing on both sides of the ball. They may like one of those wide receivers named Drake. Yeah, right? well, he, he, absolutely. Right. He I, might help know, a little. <laughs> wish him the best, and he'll he'll do well. And uh, yeah, it's going to be fun to watch. Amen, amen. All right, let's talk about the ACC. Clemson Tigers favored to win that conference. Do you think it's just Clemson's to lose? Sure, uh, absolutely. Um, you know, it's surprising they lost last year. You know, for whatever reason, they they didn't have the years they're used to having. I mean, uh, but I don't anticipate that happening again. You know, you're going to have a you know a bump in the road here and there, a, a team like that, but. You know, but their quarterback with another year under his belt, I, I believe, will play better. And, uh, you know, I, I, it'll hurt them to, to whatever degree losing Brent. So that may – we'll have to see how that plays out for them. But, uh, but I thought that was – I was surprised that, that they didn't win it uh, a year ago. But, hey, you know, give Pitt and uh, Nard Pat Narduzzi uh, credit. Uh, they played great. I loved their quarterback, you know, last year. But Pickett. he's gone. Pitt, uh, Kenny Pickett. Uh, he is with the Steelers, so um, you know they. Congrats to them, you know, to be able to knock Clemson out of there for a year. Yeah, and you know the challengers. You got NC State. They're returning a lot of people. The schedule lines up good for them. You don't know about North Carolina. Last year, fool's gold, right? They were in the top ten in the country. Had a really rough year. Then you've got the Florida schools, Florida State and Miami. Expectation pressure around both of those programs each and every year as well. Yeah, it's um, it's surprising. Florida State hasn't made more of a mark and been better. Um, uh, you know, it's it, it's hard to say why when you're not there. Uh, Miami, I believe, uh, will have an uptick here big time with Mario Cristobal. I think he's a excellent coach, and and he's got excellent coaches on his staff. He's got a loaded coaching staff with great uh, with great history and experience, a positive experience. So that's going to make a you know, that's going to matter to them as well. All right, moving on. SEC, Oklahoma's future conference, Alabama preseason, number one in the country, Georgia in the top five as well. Do you see kind of a rematch, or do you see Kentucky potentially coming up and having a great season? Oh, I, I, I'd love to say Kentucky. But I don't know if Mark wants me to or not, my brother. <laughs> so uh, if I want to put that pressure on him. But he likes his team, and I, I believe they're going to have a, another really good year. I don't know if they're in a position to, to win the SEC championship. Um, I think I, I think those two teams uh, are the uh, the ones to beat. Of course, still the the way they've recruited and uh, you know again both both schools have such strong coaching staffs that uh, that I, I believe they'll they'll definitely be the ones in it. All right, you got a first year coach at LSU, uh, former Notre Dame head football coach. How, how do you see LSU doing? Uh, under a first-year administration? I think they'll do well. Brian Kelly's, again, accomplished, excellent coach, been very consistent at, at Notre Dame. You, you, you know, you haven't seen any of those poor years. You saw some from other uh, head coaches at Notre mm -hmm. Dame. He's been consistently good and solid, and I, and I see him doing the same thing at LSU. And, you know, it's hard. I, I can't tell you that I'm real familiar with their personnel, so it's hard for me to – you know, say how well he'll do, but it, but Brian Kelly's a great coach, so I, I believe they'll be they'll be hard to deal with. And LSU year in and year out recruits well, exactly. so th there's going to be talent on that field. Another new coach in the Florida Gators, a team you're very familiar with. How do you think Florida is going to do this year? Will it be a rebound year? Yeah, it's hard to say. Um, again, it, it's kind of 
it's been hard to, you know, I, I've always believed in Dan Mullen and, and watched his teams, you know, at, at Mississippi State were always so good. And why they weren't able to get over the hump at Florida, it's hard to say why, you know. And again, when you're not there, it's hard to know what's the culture like, you know, and, and how do they work. And, and now with Billy Napier, you know, he, he's got a good track record, you know, really solid coach. Um, will it translate to, to Florida? You know, will it, will it carry over to Florida? It's hard, hard to say. Um, you know, uh, but they're, they're also a team that always has great talent. Yep. So, and they got a heck of a quarterback uh, that's back, uh, Anthony Richardson, who's a big, strong, can run, throw. So, you know, they've got the pieces to do it. Yeah, I think the interesting piece for me is the year before Dan Mullen actually played in an SEC championship game, you know, had his team high, finished in the top 10 in the country, uh, other than the loss in the bowl game to Oklahoma that was not pretty. And he didn't even make it the whole season. You know, they fired him in the middle of the season last year. I mean, the expectations were very high for the Gators going into that season. It, it, you know, it, that's one of the programs that they're always going to have high expectations. And Coach Spurrier kind of set the bar with that and, and how consistently he won and won the SEC championship so many times. And, and, uh, and then Urban Meyer had his stretch there too where they were really, you know, playing so well. So uh, the expectations are going to be there for sure. Now, Texas A&M recruited very well, a lot of expectations for them. The team that came off the radar last year was Arkansas. Do you see Arkansas having more of a target on their back this year? Absolutely. Um, they're, I don't know if they snuck up on anyone a year ago or not, but I, again, Sam Pittman, heck of a head coach. Uh, Ball, we have known Sam a long time, has always done a great job coaching everywhere he's been. You could tell he's reaching his team. His team likes, they play hard. They, they, they're solid, both, you know, scheme-wise, very good both sides of the ball. So there, there, there's nothing that I don't believe that was a fluke. They're, they're going to be a, a really good team moving forward. All right. So you see Georgia and Alabama in the championship game in the SEC. Who do you got winning that one? Uh, I think it's hard to it'd be hard to beat Alabama twice, you know, <laughs> and, um, you know, but. You know, Stetson Bennett loved their quarterback. You know, I don't know why. Was he up? He's up for the Heisman, uh, isn't he? He or, could be, yeah. And it uh, seems like he's been there forever, by the way. No kidding. Uh, and uh, But it's just hard. I, I think uh, Bryce Young another year in, in uh, Alabama. I'm just listening to Coach Saban. It was a rebuilding year a year ago. Oh, my. Wait, that, what, what will this yeah. be then? <laughs> so, yeah, amen. Point being, He's, he's probably got a stacked hand, and uh, you know they, the way they recruit, they're 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 not going to be down much. So I could uh, I would I would take them. And there's some Georgia fans that still will not give Stetson Bennett any loving. I mean, the guy won the national championship, and J T. Daniels left because he couldn't beat him out. He's fantastic. Um, I, I love watching him. I, I watched Georgia a lot last year, and I thought I thought he was outstanding. It just everything that he did and uh, when he, he was clutch when he needed to be as well. All right, Pac-12, Lincoln Riley's new school, USC getting a lot of love from Vegas to actually win the national championship, not only uh, to win the Pac-12, other teams of interest, Utah really competitive, obviously UCLA had a great year last year and returns a lot of players for Chip Kelly. How do you feel this conference is gonna go? Yeah, um, I, 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 believe, I believe in uh, Lincoln Riley will do a great job. He's, a, he's an excellent, obviously proved it here, he's an excellent coach and, and they'll have talent. And it seems like they, through transfer and recruiting, have, got, have really redone their roster to a positive yes. degree. So I see them being there. Uh, I love Utah. I, I think uh, Kyle Winningham does one of the best jobs in the country that goes a little bit unnoticed. They're always physical, tough. Um, I picked them uh, last year to, to win the, the championship because of how well they, how physical they were, and uh, and and it showed up and Good it pick. showed up in the game. Yeah, exactly. Um, they just they're just tough, you know, defensively. They're tough running the football. They play smart. They don't turn it over. Anyway, and um, you know, so I I think that's a, a big deal. Oregon, we'll see. Um, you know, they always have talent. Uh, you know, they've got a new coach, and he, he got a great track record. So it'll be interesting to see, you know. But those, those would be the three top teams, I would think. All right, who do you see winning the conference? Who do you believe? 
I, I think uh, Utah, just because of their experience, they just did it a year ago, uh, their physicalness, toughness, and then, uh, you know, it's good. It, may, it may take Lincoln a year to, to get things a little more going, you know, just a little more familiar with the team, but we'll see. I, I, I think it'll come down to those two, SC and, and Utah. All right, now to the conference you actually played in, the Big Ten. Ohio State is getting a lot of attention, rightfully so. Michigan getting a lot of attention. They won the Big Ten last year, rightfully so. How do you feel this conference? Do you see Penn State playing better? Maybe Iowa coming in and playing better? Wisconsin? I mean, there's some good teams in the Big Ten. They're all always solid, tough teams. You know, all those teams you just named are all play really good defense. They play, you know, physical on the offense, the way they run the ball. Um, I, I think Ohio State's too talented. I, I, I'd pick Ohio State. Um, I know Michigan got them a year ago. Michigan caught them in, in, in a perfect ga- game. Uh, they had kind of a snowy, cold day uh, in, in Ann Arbor. And, and not, not don't take anything away from Michigan because I, I loved watching Michigan last year. And I actually picked them to win in that yes. game. And uh, and I think very few people were agreeing with you. You were right. No, and Coach Harbaugh does a great job. His staff does. Um, I think they lost their, I believe they lost their old coordinator and maybe D coordinator. That changes things. Um, And, uh, but I I think uh, Ohio State just overall with C.J. Stroud and uh, Ryan Day, of course, and Kevin Wilson is there also as the old coordinator. They got Jim Knowles now. Uh, working with that defense. So it's hard to pick against them. Yeah, great coaching, great talent usually equals big time wins. So right. it'd be interesting. All right. So just to recap in the Big 12, uh, Coach Stoops picked Oklahoma, ACC, he picked Clemson, SEC, he picked Alabama, Pac 12, he picked Utah, and in the Big 10, he picked Ohio State. So, all right, let's talk a little bit about the college football playoff. Who do you see in the college football playoff, and who do you believe will potentially win the national championship? Yeah, I think the easy pick is is to go with Alabama to win it all, just with experience again, quarterback, experience quarterback coming back, all the history with Coach Saban and, and his success, and then a, a team that that, as he said, is is was has been reloaded from a year ago, which was a darn good football team yes. a year ago. So, um, and then I, I like this the, the way it sets up with um, you know, uh, of course, Ohio State will be up there, Georgia will be up there. I, I think OU will be up there. I, I think we're, OU is going to surprise people. They think it's going to be a little bit down. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I, I, I'd like them to be up there. Clemson's going to be in the mix. Uh, they always, you know, they had, I guess they weren't a year ago, but that was unusual. And their recruiting's always so good. Um, who would be the outside pick to, to get in there that? I mean, you could get Utah in there potentially. Uh, yeah, you is. know, that, that's the possibility, Utah. If they run the table, there's right. a good chance right. of it. Right. Yeah, so it's going to be a lot of fun. If you believe Vegas, the guys in the desert, there are only a handful of teams that are actually predicted to win every regular season game that they're scheduled to win. Alabama's one of them. Oklahoma's another one. I didn't there know that. Go. That's a great Boomer stat. Sooner. So the, Hopefully they're the, correct. The gamblers <laughs> believe in the Oklahoma Sooners. Well, Coach Stoops, as always, thank you so much. And thank you so much for watching. Remember, for videos anytime, just tap on our video link. For Hall of Fame football coach Bob Stoops, I'm Brad McMullen.